Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome to this video on how to make a non bootable image bootable with the collaboration suite of software. Now, some of you may be thinking, don't you already have that in some of your other videos? And yes, I do. However, just like with anything with technology, there are more ways than one to achieve a particular end result. And in my case, there are two things that seem to be a hang up for many viewers, or at least a handful of them. Number one, I use in the video examples that I show, I use Ultra ISO, which is a $30 program. So technically it's not free. And you need to have a Linux distribution ISO to extract a boot biff, to then reinsert the boot biff. And for some people that is not an intuitive process. So oftentimes I'll get comments or messages requesting the boot biff file and you know, even that, the whole intent is so you could do your whole lab yourself. So my method that I, in that example, isn't necessarily the best for everybody. So earlier this year, in late January, one of the channel viewers, Al Reed from the UK, had actually sent me a procedure that he uses that uses free software to create bootable disks or to make the non-bootable image bootable. And so for this video, I thought I would share his method to see if it will better accommodate the uh, downfalls that the examples I gave in previous videos have for some of the users. Users. So as you can see here, I have a VM instance that I'm just going to start up. Uh, I had actually recorded this earlier today, but found out there were something wrong with the audio. And it, so it was really clicky and poppy. So I am now re-recording this whole series. But as you can see here, this is the end result of what I'm about to show you. So we take a non-bootable image, we'll make it bootable. And when we power it up, as you can see, we are brought in with the CUCM 1151 installation from a non-bootable disk. And I will save the clip, even though the audio is bad, at the very end to show where this LLC MVFMV host name came from, if you're really inclined to know where that came from. All right, so to begin, we're going to be needing two pieces of software if you don't already have it. 7-Zip, which I will have the links in the description, but you'll go ahead and download whichever version you want, 32 or 64-bit. And then over here at CDR Tools front end, I used the English, I downloaded those. And for this next part, I'm going to use the original footage, just do a voiceover. So I'll disappear for a second to explain the installation process, and then we'll come back live. All right, now for 7-Zip, it's very straightforward. You just run the executable, choose the destination folder, click on install, and that is literally it. And then you just close it. Good deal. Now for CDR Tools front end, run that executable. Choose your language, choose next. Accept the agreement if you choose to. I didn't actually read it. Select your destination directory. Choose next, and in my case, if you need English, you have to have multi-language selected because German's the default. And I didn't need any of the other options on there. So choose next, next again, and install. And then you can just click finish to complete the installation. All right, so now that you have both pieces of software installed, we are going to, in a, I will open this in Ultra ISO just to show you that, as you can see here under image, where it says data, CD, DVD, if it were bootable, it should say bootable. In this case, it is not. So this one is intended just to be an upgrade. So I'll call, close this out. And the first thing that we'll do is use the 7-zip to extract all the contents. And depending on your CPU, you know, may take a little bit longer than others, but shouldn't take too long. Okay, so now that that has extracted, we can go into the folder and under this ISO Linux, I'm just going to copy this ISO Linux bin file. And I'm just going to paste it over here. So we have that. Now at this point too, if for some reason you need to modify the install file, like if you don't have hardware requirements and you need to trick the system or at least allow it to not enforce the minimum requirements. This is where you can go into here under Cisco, install and config, and then this call manager product. And if we edit this, this is where you can scroll down. And so here we got the Cisco Unified Communications Manager. And if you're using VMware, you can change this. If it says not, you can change it to val. 
So I think that's the default. I, I believe in the original video, I may have changed that and saved it. As a matter of fact, let me close this. I'm going to say no and then reopen it. Yeah, so see how it says not? This was just saved from Notepad++ when I did it er earlier. So you would just change the not to val. And even if you want to remove the two gigs of RAM requirements, you can just put a asterisk there. Then likewise, you can just go through for each product. So here we have Cisco Unity Connection. And again, we can change these to uh, valid just to give you more wiggle room. This is one of the things I had to do when I tried to run CUCM 8.6 on that Pentium 4 years ago. This is not required for the boot. I'm just saying this would be the time if you want to do that to make those modifications. So the next thing we're going to do is load up the CDR tools front end program itself and we will go to the options. And first we'll choose where we want to save the image and we could just call this one uh, Boot CUCM115, whatever, the ISO, save it. And we'll choose this create image only, do not burn. And also select the disk at once for the writing mode. And then we'll choose OK. And then under file system here, we're going to choose create boot disk and use no disk emulation and create boot info table. And it has a boot image here. We're going to browse to the ISO Linux that we set up here and choose open and then OK. Now at this point, we can scooch this over. We can go back to where we have the folder with all of our files and highlight them all and then copy them over. So now we have our disk pretty much ready to go here and we will click on start. Everything ready, start the writing process, we will say OK. And of course, again, based on your CPU, the time it takes will vary, but at this point we just sit back, relax, let this create the image. Now while that is saving, I thought I would show you too, uh, and I'll put this link in the uh, description as well, but this kind of gives you a baseline idea on if you don't have the OVA file to do the installation. This will give you the minimum requirements or at least a recommendation for the VM. So here in this case, if I want to use 150 user nodes, uh, two CPUs, four gigs of RAM, one 80 gig drive, and one NIC. And I thought somewhere, I didn't see it on this, on the notes here, but I thought I've seen somewhere too where it would have the recommended hardware dedicated resource. Like if you need, however many CPU processes, um, say, you know, 400 gigahertz or, or not gigahertz, but megahertz, we'll just say, for example. But that's for the guaranteed performance. So if you have multiple VMs and everything's maxed out, the hardware reservation is just guaranteeing that those resources will be available no matter what. If you don't have that enforced, you can oversubscribe, but potentially run into issues. But in a lab environment, it's never really been an issue for me. So to build a VM, we can just use this as a, a matrix, assuming that you don't have the OVA template. Okay, and now that this is complete, you can see execution completed, and we can close this. Now back on our folder here, if I double click on this, or open, I should say, if I open this in Ultra ISO, you can now see the image is bootable, CD, DVD. And at this point, we can go to browse to our data store to upload the file. This is the one that I uploaded earlier doing the same process. So for the sake of time, I think I'll just use this. And I showed you in the beginning of the video that it worked. The only thing I didn't show you was the uh, creation. I had a helper on the first video. So I'll do this alone this time. So I'll power this off and delete it. Delete from disk, yes. And again, if you don't have the OVA file, we're just going to go here and say new virtual machine. Choose custom. We'll call this CUCM boot test. 
and I'll use the NS NFS version 8 and Linux Red Hat Linux 64 bit and based on that matrix it said two vCPUs four gigs of RAM and, and an 80 gig hard drive so we'll say two CPUs four gigs of RAM Select your net had one network interface and I noticed it says 80 gigs hard drives here and just so you know if you're doing an upgrade you actually um, and it's a VM you need to have one of the partitions actually up to 160 gig in order to upgrade it from say like 86 to 11.5 but I'll, I'll make this one 80 gig in this example Next, advanced, and we'll edit the machine settings before completion. We'll remove this. And I guess why not? I will go ahead and upload the file we just created. Just to show you, this will work. But this is wireless, so it does take a little while to upload so I'm just gonna upload this real quick okay so now that it is uploaded I'm gonna go back and edit our VM and under CD choose the data store connect that power on and choose the CUCM 11.5 boot that we created okay We'll open the console and now for the moment of truth hopefully this is exactly the same as it was in the beginning of the video and yeah you would get the acquiring the DHCP thing if you didn't have a valid boot image and you can see it's going through the hardware detection and now we are at the installation screen so again to Al Reed from the UK thank you again sir for your contribution and willingness to share your methods I can pretty much guarantee at a minimum most of the other channel viewers here will appreciate the fact that it's 100% free and you don't have to worry about have existing or downloading other boot images of Linux to extract the boot biff and try to get the boot biff or insert it your method is a lot more convenient to say the least and everyone else thanks for watching i hope this was informative for you and of course if you have any questions let me know and as always appreciate you watching and i will see you guys in the next video all right so you want to show where to go next you want to create the virtual machine yeah okay machine yeah vert you say virtual machine okay. yep so we'll say new you say new yeah, no. then custom yeah and then what can you give it a name can you push a button perfect good job